Shalom Chavarim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live and we've got all kinds of things that are breaking going on in the world today. Uh, everything from the London fires uh, or the London fire there that has engulfed a huge uh, high rise building there in London. And supposedly this is uh, thus far not been founded as an act of arson, uh, but perhaps maybe just negligence to the building, not the, uh, the proper upkeep there. Uh, waiting to see what comes of this though, but the fire of course raged uh, during the night there, engulfing the entire building. I don't even see how that was possible. It's such a huge building that the entire thing would just burn to nothing there, but in fact it did. Uh, there were reported that there were supposed to be people inside the building, trapped inside the building, so I have no idea as of yet what the fatality rate may be. Uh, says 50 people have been taken to, to five hospitals. The building was engulfed quickly, according to the uh, World Israel News here, uh, and says that the, according to the Stuart Critton, the ambulance service assistance director of the operations, 100 medics were on the scene. Uh, together with the ambulance crews of Advanced Trauma Teams, Commissioner Danny Cotton called the fire an unprecedented incident, uh, saying she has never seen anything on the scale in her 29-year uh, career. And in fact, uh, my son, uh, Ethan, was the one that brought this to my attention today uh, as we were doing some work here. And uh, when he first saw the news himself, he, he thought it was something more along the lines of 9-11, seeing just a huge, a massive fire uh, out of control inside of London. And then of course also RT reporting as many as many other uh, news outlets are reporting shooter targets Republican congressman at an Alexander baseball practice. Five people have been injured uh, thus far f uh, uh, when a gunman opened fire on a U.S. Uh, congr congressman at a baseball practice in Alexandria, Virginia. Steve uh, Scalia a uh, Republican of uh, Louisiana, the House Representative's majority uh, uh, whip is among the injured. Alexandria police say that the suspect is in custody and is, an, is not a threat. All voters, all votes scheduled for Wednesday in the, in the House for Representatives have been canceled. President Donald Trump also has uh, canceled this afternoon's speech at the Department of Labor. Uh, and as you can see here on your screen now, these are live images, uh, courtesy there of Rupley. Uh, they're still on the scene trying to, to get a hold of what has actually happened here uh, from early reports that we had gathered there. A, a man with an assault rifle come in and asking, was this a Republican event? And once he found out that was the case, he began to open fire. Very serious situation uh, indeed. Uh, this article right here in the Russian language here, very uh, disturbing news. This is uh, speaking about... Uh, President Petro Poroshenko uh, is headed to the United States. He'll be meeting, according to the article here, be meeting with uh, President Donald Trump as well as the Vice President Pence and even Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. According to the article here, it seems to be that um, uh, Petro Poroshenko may be discussing on the main part of the agenda the situation inside of Ukraine, of eastern Ukraine there, and that of Crimea. It seems like the United States is definitely not going to give up uh, on, on aiding uh, Petro Poroshenko, uh, his military there, to try to stomp out the eastern uh, Ukrainian citizens that have tried to declare their own autonomy there, as well as Russia helping the, uh, the, the Russian, ethnic Russian citizens of Crimea to succeed from the state there rather than being murdered by this dictatorial regime uh, that has been put in place there since the Maidan coup that overthrew uh, uh, former President Yakonovich uh, inside of uh, uh, Ukraine there. Very, very touching situation there. Have to wait to see how that, that plays out, but unfortunately, I don't think it's going to play out well, and uh, well, especially for those that are more of an ethnic Russian background, citizens that are living inside of Ukraine. And finally, we reported to you guys here on Israeli News Live about the use of uh, the uh, uh, the the chemical weapons that were being used by the United States here, the phosphorus, white phosphorus weapons that were being used inside of Mosul, uh, that was, of course, in, inside of Iraq. Uh, well, in fact, where the ancient city of Nineveh is. Now, granted, as we reported ourselves, the United States was targeting ISIS with it, but this is a banned substance in the use of war. 
But according to RT, and according also to, I believe, CNN as well, they reported uh, the fact that the Pentagon has admitted to this. Uh, let me read to you a little bit of what the article says here. A New Zealand general has confirmed that the U.S.-led coalition fighting in Mosul has used munitions loaded with white phosphorus. It comes amid mounting criticism over the U.S. of multi-purpose weapon, which can be extremely dangerous to civilians. Over the past few weeks, an increasing number of claims have pointed to the use of white phosphorus munitions by the U.S. coalition in Mosul, Iraq, and Raqqa, Syria. In fact, I think we were reporting the ones from Raqqa, Syria, not that of Mosul. Uh, the two strongholds of the terrorist groups, Islamic State ISIS, the use of the weapons in Mosul was confirmed by New Zealand's Brigadier General Hugh uh, McAuslin. We have utilized white phosphorus to screen areas within the west of Mosul to get civilians out safely, he told the U.S. broadcaster in what appears to be the first uh, confirmation of its kind. Previously, the coalition reported using white phosphorus munitions in rural areas in Iraq, but not in densely populated cities. Now, as we shared with you here on Israeli News Live, as you can see right here, that they're trying to get civilians out. What about the civilians that are held captive by ISIS itself? I don't see any way safely to get them out without having a casualty. And I don't want to second guess the U.S. military, them trying to uh, defeat ISIS and trying to uh, minimize that of the casualties of civilians. I know the U.S. has always tried to do that. But it just seemed very troubling to see this much white, white phosphorus falling down on a civilian area. Uh, even though it is an ISIS stronghold, the mere fact that a civilian was filming it uh, was, was troubling enough uh, as it is. Also, the Middle East Monitor, or the Middle East Eye there, reporting U.S. rocket artillery deployment uh, uh, to southern Syria for the first time. The U.S. is definitely not playing games. There's also another article I've been reading earlier today in the Russian language there, speaking about that the Russians, uh, so allegedly, excuse me, not, uh, not the Russian language, but actually in the Arabic language news, are claiming that the Russians and the U.S. are trying to negotiate a land swap to pull Iranians away from southern Syria. Don't know how that's going to go over very well. And these are Iranian-backed militias. From some information I've been able to gather on that, it's not uh, per se Iranian fighters, but Iranian-backed militias that are fighting inside the country to help President Bashar al-Assad. But anyway, uh, the U.S. has moved in. The Himars was deployed close to al Tanf coalition training base, a hotspot for clashes between U.S. and Syrian government forces, according to the Middle East Eye. Um, it goes on to say the U.S. has moved its highly mobility artillery rocket system HIMARS into southern Syria from Jordan for the first time, according to defense officials. According to CNN, the deployment will position it near the U.S. coalition's training base at, at Al Tanf, which has been a flashpoint for clashes between the U.S. forces and loyal to the Syrian government. And the HIM HIMARS is a truck mounted system which can fire missiles as far as 300 kilometers and will heavily boost U.S. military power uh, in southern Syria. Don't forget, we've shared with you in, in great detail the, um, uh, the massive amount of a military, the U.S. British Special Forces there, uh, as well as Norwegian forces there that have on the uh, Jordan, uh, Jordan and Syrian border there. So there's a lot more they could run across that uh, line when the time, uh, I would believe, presents itself opportune uh, to do so. And that is taking down Damascus. I still believe that that's coming, friends. Can I help but believe that? Uh, another thing that's kind of interesting, uh, the article comes out on Sputnik by supporting Kurds. The U.S. tries to set up the second Israel. Uh, and that's kind of funny because, you know, the Russians also have been supportive of the Kurdish fighters as well, as well as the United States has. Uh, and I don't look at it as being a second Israel. But one thing's for sure, the Kurds that have been fighting inside uh, both Iraq and that of uh, Syria, they do deserve to have their own state. They have been the best fighters by far against ISIS. And that's not uh, from me being any kind of expert. This is from U.S. and Russian uh, military advisors have uh, both declared that they are the best fighters against ISIS. So I think the people do deserve their own place. The, the Turkish have hated the Kurds. They have tried to uh, eradicate them completely from the face of the earth, uh, especially that inside of Turkey. 
and so it's not going over very well. Anyway, it says, commenting on the recently revived calls for an independent Kurdistan and on the announced referendum on the issue, which is to be held on Iraq on September 25th, Turkish politician and lawyer Dogul uh, Persinik, excuse me, Perinsik, told Sputnik Turkai that, that, that thus the U.S., which supports the Kurds, is trying to set up the second Israel. Well, it seems to stand for reason that the Turks would be against it because uh, they've been trying to take them out, as I have said. They have fought against the Kurds the entire time that they have tried to fight ISIS. The, the Turkish have completely attacked them on, on every uh, avenue you can possibly imagine. It says, on June 7th, Mossad Bazani, an, an Iranian-born Iraqi Kurdish politician, the president of the Iraqi Kurdistan regional government, announced that a referendum for an independent Kurdistan will be held in Iraq on September 25th. Uh, I wish them all the best in the world. Uh, also, a bit of good news, but yet a very somber and sad news as well, as the 22-year-old uh, young man, uh, Mr. Otto Wambayer, he landed in Cincinnati with an ambulance waiting for him. Uh, North Korea had released him uh, after being in custody for 17 months, all over the pulling down a poster. I mean, this is absolutely absurd, but what can you expect from North Korea to begin with? Uh, they had arrested him, uh, sentenced him to 15 years uh, for pulling down a poster, uh, and, uh, and of course, he has been in a coma is the reason why they released him. They're afraid that he's going to die there. And what's even worse, as I found out, is that the 22-year-old young man has been in a coma for a year. They should have released this man a long time. We should have never even imprisoned him, uh, for that matter. It's just really, really ridiculous the way things go. You know, I will say, friends, anybody ever planning on trying to visit one of these type countries here, you need to be careful. Also, let me bring one other bit of news out to you. I don't have anything up here on it. I was watching this earlier today uh, on the news here in the Czech Republic. And, of course, I saw it yesterday as well on Twitter. The uh, European Union is ready to sue Poland. Czechoslovakia, or excuse me, Czech Republic here, where I'm living at now, and Hungary for not bringing in Syrian refugees or refugees in general. They are ready to sue them. In fact, Poland has zero refugees. Uh, the Czech Republic does have some refugees, but very, very small numbers. And that is one reason why we don't have any terrorist activities going in on in these countries here is because of the way the laws have been. But nonetheless, I guess the European Union doesn't uh, feel uh, that this is the right thing, that they should all be suffering terrorism. So instead, they're going to put sanctions on the Czech Republic, along with Poland and Hungary, if they are not going to allow uh, refugees to come in their country. And uh, this just is not going to go over very well. So I guess what we have to do is open our borders here, let our women be raped, people terrorized, and I'm not saying that all refugees are like this. We know that this is not the case, but unfortunately, there is a large number that are. And that's exactly what we will end up with uh, if we were to open the borders and allow this to take place. Uh, without some very good um, way of thinking to get to, without, let me put it this way, without a better way of doing it. And I just don't know of any better way. At any rate, uh, thank you for watching. Have a great afternoon. And don't forget, if you would like to support our broadcast, we do appreciate it tremendously. You can visit IsraeliNewsLive.org or .co.il, either way. Uh, visit our website there. You can donate there or right here on Israeli News Live. If you're watching Israeli News Live on YouTube uh, and the channel says Israeli News Live, then you can check a donation link right above the subscribe button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Show.